I see a weevil in the pot. Oh, it smells amazing. It's um, cat mint. Hi, welcome back to 17 square meters garden. Today I have a little plant hole. I bought some herbs and some new perennials for my part shade balcony garden. And I thought that I will share this with you in case if you are also searching for some ideas or inspiration of what you can plant in your part shade garden. Okay, I'm gonna show you what I bought and then I will plant all of these plants. Let's start with herbs. I have four herbs for this year uh, because that's the herbs that I use most often. So I have chives. I really love chives. They are great for full shade and for part shade. Uh, and they are perennial as well. Next is mint. Mint is also a perennial plant, so you can plant it once and enjoy it for many years. There are different types of mint. This one is a spicata, species spicata. It's great for mojitos. One thing about mint is that you have to plant it in a separate pot. If you plant mint with anything else, mint is just so invasive. As you can see, it produces this sort of uh, runners and it produces them underground just like that and it just pops everywhere. So if you have a garden, do not plant mint directly in the ground because then it will just pop up everywhere like a weed. And it's the same in pot. Usually, even in pot, you will just plant mint on its own. Next is parsley. Parsley is also great. You can plant it in full shade. You can plant it in part shade. It will do just fine. Uh, with mint, I forgot to mention, is if you can provide it with a few hours of morning sun, that would be ideal. Uh, you wouldn't really want to plant mint in full shade because then it will elongate, it will start to grow really leggy and probably it will not taste as well. So mint for part shade, uh, a few hours of morning sun will be great. Chives and parsley can be grown in full shade. Coriander is very similar to parsley. You can also plant it in part shade, it will grow really well. And the last one is basil. Although probably most of you grow basil in a sunny location, basil surprisingly does really well in part shade with a few hours of morning sun not full shade but part shade with the morning sun it will do just fine um, what i noticed with me uh, with basil is that it grows a little bit smaller in a part shade area and it may elongate a little but um, it's still very very tasty it smells amazing and i grew it many times in on my balcony and it does really really well so part shade for basil now my perennial plants, they look a little bit sad because I forgot to water them uh, and they don't look like much as I mentioned, but give them a few months and I'm sure they will bloom and they will look amazing. I'm very excited about this one. It looks a little bit wild, but uh, that's the point. I really want this kind of wild cottage vibe a little. And this one, it's a mouthful to pronounce. It's Erygion Kervinskianus. I I always thought that it can grow only in full sun, like really sort of dry conditions, rock garden type of situation. But apparently it grows well in part shade as well. So it will create a little mound of daisy-like flowers. I really love it, it looks so cute. Um, and uh, it's a perennial for me, but in colder climates, it's probably not gonna survive the winter. It stays quite small. I mean, it grows, it has this kind of wild habit of growth, but it is a fairly short and fairly small plant. I'm gonna plant it in a wicker basket because I really want that cottagey vibe in a wicker basket and some daisy flowers coming out of it. And I think that will look really, really cute. They look sad because I forgot to water them. Uh, we have two Rudbeckias. It's Rudbeckia fulgida variety speciosa. Also daisy-like flowers. These ones are taller. These ones are 70 centimeters long. And I'm gonna plant one per pot. They are winter hardy, so you cut them back in fall and they come back every year. Okay, and the last plant that I'm really excited about is Nepeta, which is a cat mint. It smells amazing, I must say. But I really wanted two specific cultivars. I wanted either cat pyjamas or the other one um, cat's meow or something like this i don't know but i couldn't find it online all the time when i checked online it says it's unavailable so i said i thought well i'm not gonna wait i'm just gonna go to the garden center and check if they have any and they had some more um let's say ordinary nepeta it's there it doesn't have any cultivar name it's a species nepeta musinii uh, i believe that's how you pronounce it might be wrong about that but uh, yeah really excited to grow some cat mint it's gonna have a beautiful purple blooms and as you can see i go with that theme of white yellow and purple this year so i'm excited to add some more perennials to my garden so yeah let's go to plant all of these plants i have these wicker baskets i previously had them um, back there but I'm thinking I'm gonna create a wicker basket area in here although um, as you can see I'm using some pot to upside down to lift the ivy a little bit off the floor so that it's a little bit higher 
so I still have to cover it up somehow because right now it looks a little bit odd but uh, I want to create a wicker basket area in here I'm gonna remove this oxalis bulbs from this basket that I planted I planted them earlier this spring and I really don't like how it looks but I have oxalis planted in this pot in this galvanized container so I'm thinking I'm gonna just replant these bulbs to this galvanized pot to try not to damage the roots too much I'm just gonna pop them into this pot wherever I find place Okay, now time for Erigion. It likes soil to be dry, it doesn't like to be in moist soil, so this basket situation I think it will be quite perfect for it because the soil does dry out pretty quickly in here because it's such a small reservoir. I'm just gonna gently spread the roots a little, not too much. I really love planting in wicker basket. I feel like it gives that natural cottage look and I've never had a problem with baskets uh, rotting out. I, I think I even have in my shorts, in YouTube shorts, some tutorial on how to plant in wicker baskets. So basically I always spray them with a wood preservative before. I line them with the plastic. I make uh, little holes at the bottom of the plastic so that the water can drain. Uh, and then I plant my plants in it and um, they do really fine. We have a lot of rain and stuff like that and they never rot out. Okay, so what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna catch back the foliage of my daffodils here. So they are spring flowering bulbs that I'm gonna keep uh, for the next for next year. So I'm gonna cut the foliage back and I'm gonna plant the rudbeckia on top. So rudbeckia will grow and bloom during summer season. In fall, I will cut it back because it's gonna go into dormancy. And then in spring, when the spring bulbs, when the daffodils will start to grow, Rudbeckia will be still dormant, so it will, should be perfectly fine. And then when the bulbs will be done blooming, I can um, then cut them back and leave a space for the Rudbeckia to um, develop. They are quite deep, so there is enough space for Rudbeckia to root in. So as you can see, it's pretty root bound. I'm just gonna gently tease them. Just like that. Just open up them a little. Okay. Okay. And these two will be planted in this part of the balcony. Look at the geraniums, aren't they amazing? I absolutely love them. They are so simple, like they are kind of considered an old school plant, so, you know, like no one wants to grow geraniums nowadays. People fancy some other more unique plants, but they're just so reliable and they bloom so beautifully. But anyway, I think I will plant both of these here. Uh, and once they are in flower, I'll probably change the layout a little bit. Okay, I do know that foxglove is poisonous, but, uh, and I work with bare hands, but I'm gonna wash my hands really well afterwards, so don't worry. Just for the information, I removed the foxglove because foxgloves are biennials, so you plant them one year and they, the first year they produce only leaves and the second year they bloom. So there's no point in keeping them because they are not gonna bloom next year, they are just biennial. I see a weevil in the pot. Come here. I found a weevil, I'm gonna show you. Um, so these guys, they munch on your plants, they bite, they eat the leaves of your plants. But it's not even this that is the most bothering, is that these guys are gonna lay eggs and those eggs will hatch into vine weevil grubs. So the little grubs that will then eat the roots of your plant. And they can make a lot of damage really, really fast. I had them last fall, so they will the eggs will hatch in fall. So in the end of August, September, uh, it's great to apply nematodes, to water nematodes onto your soil. Nematodes are like microscopic worms that will uh, paralyze and will kill the grubs that are eating the roots of your plants. It is a natural way, biological control method. There's no more natural method than using predators against the pest. Whoops, no, 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 you don't go out. No, 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 no. Come back, 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 back. Back in the pot you go. That's a weevil. 
if you see something like this, I highly recommend that you use nematodes if you don't want to lose your plants. Okay, so all the perennial flowers are planted up. As for maintenance, they prefer soil to be slightly dry, on the drier side, so do not water them. If you grow the same plants, do not water them too often. I'm gonna water them now, after planting, and I will use a product called Power Roots, which helps with um, transplant shock, and because it's based on potassium, it uh, helps with healthy root development. And then throughout the summer, I will give them Alga Bloom, which is a fertilizer for flowering plants. Uh, but yeah, now time to plant herbs. Mint is for now here on the floor among the blueberry bushes and white currants. Chives at the back because they don't need as much sun. Uh, parsley in front and basil um, in here. Here I have radish, here I have loose, loose leaf lettuce and here I have some arugula, a little veggie herb planter. Before I end this video, I just wanted to let you guys know that in June I won't be publishing two videos per week. There will be only one video a week, which will be on Saturday morning, so there won't be the Wednesday evening video. Because I have some professional projects that I have to offer more attention to, I have to focus on those professional projects. And uh, if you want to see some more frequent updates from me, from my balcony, you can always follow me on Instagram, where I post quite frequently. I share some little things in stories almost every day. Uh, but uh, yeah, after June I will see how the things go and if I'm able to come back to two videos per week. Uh, I will see and I will let you guys know. So there won't be a video next Wednesday. Uh, next video that you will see will be on Saturday morning. Um, yeah, thank you for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you found some new ideas of what plants, what flowers, what herbs you can plant in your part shade garden. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next video, which will be on Saturday morning. Bye.